Welcome back to Silver State Trains. I was asked to do a video on Kato switches, so I thought I would go ahead and get that video made. But prior to, to doing that, I just wanted to do a quick little update here. Um, I have bought a new digital mic, so hopefully the sound is better today. We shall see. Um, and I did pick up uh, two of these now. Um, these small little spy cameras, if you will, that are really tiny. Um, as you can see, it's a very small camera. I bought two of these now and none of them work. Uh, I can't get them to turn on or really do anything. So I'm supposed to be able to hold down that power button for a couple of seconds and it should start doing a light dance and nothing, dead of the water. So I've been trying to do the the video request of having a camera on my trains running, but the cameras I've been buying don't work. So, but anyhow, getting into today's video, Kato switches. So, the switches that I have on my layout, they are the number sixes. So these are power routing switches. So for this layout down here, since I'm running in DCC, I have feeders on this side of the track here so you know power is going to be running into the switch from this end here and then you have the selector switch here to um, you know whichever which way you want the train to run so when you throw the switch to run this way power that feeds in this way is going to feed the track this way or at least it would but I have insulating joiners on mine um, so whichever way you throw the switch is the way that it wants to throw the power, except in my scenario here where I have insulated this. So I'm um, supplying my own power on these two tracks um, just to kind of get rid of that feature on most of my layout. There's some, there's some exceptions, for example, in my yard where I have switches mounting back to back to back. I don't have that one side insulated so that way the power can feed all the way through the switches. Otherwise, your train, your engine won't won't move. Um, so, I was asked how this is kind of hooked up. So, on your on your Kato switch, it comes with um, red and black wire uh, with the standard Kato white feeder on the end. All that wire is for is for controlling the automated switch. So, you can either throw this by hand, or if you run that power supply to the Kato switch which is then hooked up to your Kato power pack, you can throw the switch with that and it will move this automatically for you. Let me show you what I have set up so you can see. Okay, so as you see here, I have all 18 of my switches um, or switch controllers that will control all of my switches on the layout. Um, and these have little metal tabs here that connect to the power pack. So the power pack you plug into the wall and it supplies power to these switch controllers. So whenever whenever you throw it, it will throw your switch for you. And you can connect these all in series back to back to back. They just kind of loosely snap into one another. I'm keeping this clamp here just to keep pressure on them so they don't slip apart because they can very easily come apart. Um, so again, this is just to um, the, the power pack is what supplies the power for these switches. Now there's numerous ways you can do these where you can actually not use these switches. You can mount little, you know, toggle switches or, you know, I think they're called momentary switches to your, like to your fascia board or whatnot, but you need an external power supply for that is my understanding. So you might want to check out some other videos to see how that is done. Um, I have not gotten to that stage yet. I'm still using the Kato power pack here strictly to control my switches. This throttle does absolutely nothing for my layout. I'm using a DCC, the NCE power cab DCC system to control my, my engines. This is just strictly to power my switches. So with that, um, the way that I have this wired underneath, again, there's that wire that comes already attached to your switch. So you can very simply just run that. So it plugs in right here. So as you can see that the end of that switch, or the, excuse me, the end of that wire literally just plugs into the back of your switch. 
Now I also bought ex extensions. So they sell, I think 36 inch extensions because I didn't cut any of this wire. I kept it 100% factory. So I can undo this, move it, whatever I want to do, it's all intact. Um, and that's how I laid it up underneath my layout. So I can show you that real fast. Okay, so underneath my, my layout here, as you can see all these red and black wires, those are all the wires coming off every single one of my, my switches. And as you can see here, this, let me grab one you can actually see in the camera here. Here we go. Uh, this one here, so this is the end that comes off of the switch. And then I have this plugged into a switch extension, which then continues throughout my layout until it gets to my jumble of spaghetti here, which is these are all just where all 18 of the wires run to to connect to my power pack to each individual switch. Um, and then my power packs are fed off of this strip, the power strip right here. So hopefully that explains um, how the Kato switches work. Um, so if you have any more, more questions on that, feel free to email me. I have my email address in the description. If you need f uh, any further clarification on that, I'd be happy to help out the best that I can. This is just how I'm running my, my switches on my layout. Again, I'm not saying this is the only way you can do it. This is just the way that I'm doing it. And this is both for my, this is my, my DC side for my passenger line. And this side here is for my DCC side. It's exactly the same. They're wired, they're plugged in exactly the same. The only difference for my DCC side is again, I had insulated a lot of those switches just so I can control where the power goes or how it's ran. Um, and I'm only using the power pack again, just to power the switches. So with that, hopefully that answers all of your questions on that. And with that, you all have a good day.